Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fruitful Trees. And here I am in front of my Pickering mango tree, uh, which is a small tree that's in my front yard. And I am by no means an expert on mangoes, but I'm learning a lot. And one of the things I learned is uh, to plant my smaller trees up front, my bigger trees in the back. Just one other tip that somebody gave me for my small yard here. Uh, but I had a question from somebody. They were asking what are the best smaller, they call the dooryard trees to plant in terms of uh, different varieties of different trees. And I definitely say Pickering is one of the most common small so-called dooryard varieties that most people tell me. Uh, but there are so many other good small varieties to plant. And I recently did an interview with Alex from Tropical Acres Farms. On his farm, he has over 300 varieties of mangoes, and he knows so much about mangoes. So I'm going to show you this clip of his answer to that question. And if you have more questions or comments, post them below. Uh, for the dooryard gardeners who want the most variety of each of the main flavor profiles, what are the best recommendation varieties to grow at a home yard? It kind of depends on how you define the, the, the flavor groups because you can subdivide some of these. But like, to me, there is classic. Um, there's classic subacid. There's Indian West Indian. There's Indian Alfonso which is like mangoes that taste like carry, basically. There's coconut, right? We have coconut flavored mangoes now. Um, there's citrus, and then there's two different kinds of citrus flavors. There's the Burmese citrus, as I call it, which is mangoes like lemon meringue, orange sherbet, lemon zest, actually Malika is a citrus flavored in that group. And then there's the Gary citrus. So there's two different kinds of citrus flavor, right? Um, and then there's the Thai mangoes, and then there's what I call the Indo-Chinese hybrids. So um, I'm not a fan of Thai mangoes personally that much, so I don't even have a Thai mango or Thai flavored mango in my yard. But if I was going to plant one, uh, probably Maha Chinook uh, would be uh, high on my list if I was planting a Thai mango flavored mango. Um, Indo-Chinese, I mentioned Cac and I mentioned Sassy Love. Those are near the top in terms of varieties that I would plant for the Indo-Chinese hybrid flavor. Um, and then citrus, I would go um, orange sherbet or lemon meringue, maybe if you wanted an early season citrus. Uh, for the Burmese citrus, if you wanted the Gary flavored citrus, I'd go with orange essence or seacrest. Um, Indian Alfonso, I, I favor Angie. Um, classic Pickering probably, but you might group that in the coconut group too. It depends on who you ask. Um, classic subacid, I really like Carla. Um, that's a mango from Gary Zill's breeding program that's got a terrific classic subacid flavor. So that means it's got um, a more of a, an acid component than like the kind of mango like that the old school Hayden type flavors had. Uh, and then what did I leave out? Coconut, you know, Sugarloaf for M4. There's one that we've got that has a numerical designation, no name. It's called uh, 4026. It's really impressed us. It's very similar to the Gary mango. So if you want a coconut flavored mango, that one's been pretty, pretty good, um, I have to say. So maybe more people should grow it because it fruits pretty easily. And then I think I covered all the flavor groups. There what what, what, what flavor group would the peach mangoes be in? Peach, like which one? Peach cobbler, so, juicy peach. All right, peach cobbler is, does not taste like peach uh, to me. Uh, juicy peach does though. So juicy peach belongs to the classic mango flavor group. Peach cobbler is actually more of the Gary citrus group in my opinion, uh, but it's a very rich complex mango. So it's hard to nail that one down. By the way, I left a flavor group off, Indian West Indian. If I'm planting an Indian West Indian in my yard, I'd probably plant Sunrise. I planted White Peary, actually. That's a phenomenal one, but it's a little more disease prone than Sunrise. So I'd say Sunrise would be Indian West Indian, would be the, the one for that one, going back to the last question. But anyway, um, yeah, I, that's that's the flavor groups those two mangoes fall into, Paul, the, the peach. Yeah. Juicy peach I, had a peach I had a juicy peach and a peach cobbler this summer. And they both tasted to me right out of the can of, pe of peaches. Uh, I, I disagree, but then taste is subjective, right? I feel like yeah. um, one of the things, just to go a little off track here, uh, I wish that we could have more mango tastings that were done blind, which means that you don't know what the name of the mango is or what it looks like. 
And I think if he did that, you'd be real surprised at what people would say about certain mangas. Like some mangas, they would say, "Well, there's no, there, you know, that that, you know, on certain days, like coconut cream, for example, you get people that would not use the word coconut to describe it, but then yeah. you tell them a name, and all of a sudden, it tastes like coconut. So, uh, and that happens with other stuff too. So, the me and powder. my neighbor must have did the better, did about ten videos last year, blind taste test with a whole bunch of different mangoes. I watched some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Okay, yeah. Some well, of them we were like, wow. You knew, you knew, you knew what they were, right? So. Like, no, no. Uh, no, oh, we, okay. uh, I didn't even cut some of them, so we didn't know. And oh, okay, cool. That's yeah, great, the biggest though. problem That's I had thing. was the biggest problem I had was uh, I mean, you can get one mango, cut it one day, and the same exact mango just at a better time, yeah, cut another uh, day. Like it's completely different. Yeah, you have to know when to cut them and you have to catch them at the right time. So that's tricky. But like I've always wanted to do a tasting event. That was, I mean, I like, I like having ones where you know what they are, but I also think that to fairly evaluate them, people carry severe biases. It's incredible how biased they can be when judging a fruit. So when you do it blind, it, it's very revealing. I, I've done that to people before, and it's amazing the response that I get versus what their, their preconceived notion was of that mango. All right, everybody, there was Alex, who knows so much about mangoes and his uh, suggestions and opinions about different varieties and tastes. And the last thing he said was very interesting, taste is subjective, because myself and my neighbor, we've tasted several mangoes, and, uh, you know, we did blind taste tests, and we were very uh, fooled to know which ones they were. Even some of the ones we have, we didn't recognize. Uh, so it is subjective to taste. Uh, but again, most people I know for small varieties, they love the pickering. And there are different subclasses of different types of, uh, of taste. So you, you get as many as you could a good variety, but also consider the seasons of different ones. I wouldn't want to, I'd rather have different mangoes in different seasons than all in one season with different tastes. So consider that. Maybe you're different. But thank you, Alex, for being on the show. Thank you for that question. For more comments and questions below, everybody, have a great day and keep growing.